Hello, this is Nikki Yu, also known as Faces Trader, and you're watching January 19, 2021, the global market update for Awesome 10X. Please, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share before we begin. So today, Monday, let's talk about some of the companies that you guys suggested to me last week. There was a viewer who told me about GILT, G-I-L-T, and uh, we took a look at it. Uh, and then in a way, uh, there are some interesting things about this GLAT Telecom. In their website, you could see that it's reliable connectivity everywhere. And they're actually transforming, uh, in, in a nutshell, if you take a look at the company, it's a 5G-related company with space satellites. So how to get the HTS satellite to reach its full potential? There are people who believe that uh, in order for us to successfully deploy 5G, let's read about them. Gila Telecom offers satellite and fiber-based connectivity solutions, delivering high-quality broadband communications to MNOs, telecoms, ISP, government, enterprise customers, and organizations in Africa, Asia, and South America. With successful deployments experience in over 50 countries, the company is known for providing advanced communication infrastructures as well as superior technical support and out-of-the-box solutions that can reach the most remote locations on this planet. As a customer-centric and technology-driven company, Gila Telecom utilizes innovative technologies, keep providing the customers the most cost-effective and advanced connectivity solution for capacity and stability tailored to each specific uh, customer needs. So there are solutions and uh, it seems like going out uh, into space is one of the best solutions for our uh, satellite. So solutions, satellite, fiber, HLS defense, cloud solutions, they talk about that uh, and uh, you can actually check their own um, coverage about how they address this. Let me show to you a video about how they handle it, but these are some of their uh, clientele. It's a, it's a company in Israel, but these are the coverages so far. They've got North America, UK, Gila Telecom, Tanzania, Africa, Europe. So those are a few things. You've got these uh, in Asia as well. So mostly there. Yeah, you can see it naman, Google Maps lang. Um, I think uh, there is in the news press room. In the news, you'll see uh, the companies that work with Gila Telecom. So I think recently I saw, for the Philippines' sake, uh, Philippines Globe worked with Gila Telecom. I saw that in the news. So let me read that for you for the Filipinos watching. Globe Telecom, Gila uh, Telecoms. So they are, they're working together. Uh, six days ago, Globe Telecom awarded GLAT Satellite Networks a million-dollar managed service contract for a cellular, cellular backhaul over satellite. It's a $3 million, uh, multi-million dollar deal July 2019. So this is just a top-up. So Globe Telecom in the Philippines has been expanding their cellular backhaul, working with satellite networks like GILT. So let's read this. Um, so girl, the Filipinos know about this, no? GLAT satellite networks. Globe is the largest mobile telephone network in the Philippines. So actually, I'm using uh, Globe. Uh, a multi-million will be managing the service of uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, providing a complete solution with the most resilient service. We are honored to be of value to Globe and to continue to gain their trust. We strive to enable Globe to leverage GLAT's expertise in delivering connectivity to the most challenging locations and start commanding, um, delivering the level of service that Globe requires. As we continue to evolve our solution and serve the industry with cellular backhaul over satellite. We're very thankful for this partnership to address the strategic requirement delivering significant cellular backhaul coverage in the Philippines. So um, let me show to you a few things about GILT. GILT. What's the market cap? All right. So you could see that in January, it has been breaking, breaking that $6.49. See that breakout here? There was a gap up here. So you could see that this one is in an uptrend channel uh, so far. Uh. So we haven't really studied this in depth, but uh, we are of the view that this is uh, a secular trend beneficiary of two, two things. Uh, it's a space-related play. 
uh, in court, um, satellites. So many space funds might actually buy this GLAT satellite networks. At the same time, a lot of 5G funds would like to have this GILT as part of their portfolio. So you could see a very strong sharp resistance here at about $8.40 and $10. However, a very strong support at $6.50. Now, today's price is $7.30. Assuming you buy at $7.30, no problem as long as you buy again at $6.50 because chances are sometimes it doesn't fall anymore. So $7.30 all the way to $6.50 is where you want to buy into GILT. Okay, there are also some things that I want to share you remember that I said that VHA or VHAO, VTC Impact, is actually crypto uh, exchange backed. So after the news, it went from $10 to $18, a very strong 80% move on that uh, announcement. Past few days, you are seeing a profit taking. Now, I would actually be happy to finally enter VPC Impact VIH. Here at about $14.40, all the way to about $12.32, you want to actually be buying this crypto exchange exposure backed because institutionals are very much willing to buy and sell crypto. It doesn't mean that you believe in crypto. Uh, what you have to understand is that people would buy and sell whether you believe it or not anyway. When you're a brokerage firm of cryptocurrency, of course, you earn from commissions. And a company that is earning from commissions will have a revenue. The more companies, the more clients, the more institutions, you get to see this company going up. Now, that's, there's also another crypto SPAC. This is GSAH. That is GS Acquisition Holdings. GSA is being rumored to actually be Coinbase SPAC. Let me read that rumor uh, that's uh, that's uh, happening right now for Co Coinbase. So for the last couple of years, people were saying maybe Coinbase would go enter through um, IPO or something. But uh, there are some uh, rumors already that saying that Coinbase might actually not go into an IPO, but actually be... Um, and people were saying Coinbase IPO will be controversial because it will be a litmus test for crypto. People are saying that this Coinbase IPO might actually not even be an IPO. It could actually be a SPAC. So take note at all these SPACs uh, that are going big on Bitcoin and other digital assets. Let me read a few things for you about the Coinbase IPO. Whether it's an IPO or, an, or it's a SPAC, this is the largest crypto exchange in America. So think about it. If you're the Square, uh, you're the digital wallet. for uh, and, and, you, and then I know you also offer digital assets. But the bigger entity here is Coinbase, not Square. Let's read that. Okay, so um, Coinbase IPO, 11 things to know as the crypto exchange Coinbase files to come public. What a day for cryptocurrency enthusiasts. This was December 17, 2020. Coinbase just filed confidentially for their IPO following a series of all-time highs from Bitcoin. To start, those unfamiliar with Coinbase should understand that this is the leading exchange for cryptocurrencies. The whole business started the simple way for consumers to just purchase Bitcoin. This got founded in 2012, eight years ago. With that in mind, the broader crypto space has matured. With that in mind, it's not the first time that investors have heard about Coinbase IPO, and neither is this the first time that you learn about their strategic acquisitions. Many crypto enthusiasts have always wanted to support this company, but they don't want it to be an IPO. Some are saying that Coinbase should do a direct listing following the footsteps of Spotify. However, co-founder said that um, the Coinbase IPO could happen by offering through digital tokens, even on the blockchain. So it's not very clear if the SEC would actually allow Coinbase IPO or not. So there are some people who are saying that if it's not allowed in an IPO, perhaps a SPAC, an SPAC, also known as Special Purpose Acquisition Company. So ma major Wall Street firms are giving uh, a huge target on these uh, crypto assets. You've got PayPal and Square working better to incorporate Bitcoin in their payment platforms. Last year, you've seen PayPal actually add Bitcoin uh, acceptance on their PayPal platform for their Venmo. Square, of course, has Cash App. We've got leading uh, Bitcoin billionaires like uh, Paul Tudor Jones as one of them. So what else do investors need to know here? All you got to know is the valuation of Coinbase would roughly reflect $8 billion. That alone should be a company on your radar. So it's just a... Uh, um, 
it's just a company for your radar. News pack goes big on Bitcoin and other digital assets. So there's a lot of ways to skin the cat. We're just saying that um, exchanges, SPACs, uh, in this crypto exposure are likely to actually benefit from people who wants to uh, have some crypto exposure in their companies other than simply the GBTC. So typically, you'll notice that uh, people who don't have a... Um, who, who don't have Bitcoin or a digital wallet are actually or have entered through GBTCs. There have been um, a surge since uh, March, April from about $4, $5 here to as high as $45. So you'll notice that it acts the same. It is a mirror exactly of your crypto assets. So it's an exact mirror of your BTC USD, whether you've bought it in Coinbase or in Bitstamp or in Bitfinex or in Binance or in dig digital walls like Abra and and so forth. So it's the same thing. So you could see that this is about, uh, in Coinbase, you'll see that it's about $4,000, rallied to about $40,000 at 10x move. And right now, you're seeing it consolidate. A consolidation is normal. It is what you call considerable profit taking. Profit taking can happen all the way down to about $27,000, even a 50% retracement at $24,000. The uptrend is intact, even if it is a 10x move. What it means is that um, usually after a 10x move, if there is a drop, it's just profit taking. Why is it profit taking? Precisely because the people who have $4,000 to $10,000 are profit taking here at about $37,000 or $40,000. Of course, some of them might not wish to take profit. Some of them might want to hold all the way to about fifty thousand or sixty five thousand dollars this is your um 618 fibonacci retracement um retracement and extensions um we believe that if you're look if you're looking for 10x moves this is not the way to go because it has already flown in other words guys the ship has sailed if you didn't invest early on the ship has sailed now, what do you do if you don't have it? There are some companies that are actually making money on off of these digital asset tokens. For instance, we mentioned OSTK, which actually has these supports at about $48 and some resistance perhaps at $70. Now, who is overstocked? They are tokenizing a lot of assets. It's not necessary that you are tokenizing um a digital asset like Bitcoin, you can actually tokenize a property, you can tokenize a movie, you can tokenize everything. For those people who don't know what tokenization is, how about using Google? Tokenization is the process of turning a meaningful piece of data, such as an account number, into a random string of characters called a token that has no meaningful value if breached. Token serves as a reference to original data but cannot be used to guess those values. So you can actually understand there are more stocks in the world that, uh, that, 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 that you can check up. To ch check out now, now let's take a look as well on this pack it's called electric last mile delivery solutions let's see whether my cnbc is loading okay it's not loading okay no worries i'll tell you about it it's f i i i this is a SPAC that is trading at about 13 dollars here it, uh, as you well know most packs start at about 10 dollars. so this is 13 per 30 percent already from $10, it rallied to $14. It's now closing in at $13. FII is going to compete with all the other electric pickup trucks all about last mile delivery. So um, let's read about ELMS. Uh, FIII is going to be ELMS, Electric Last Mile Delivery Solutions. So it's actually a cheaper version. Um, welcome to Elms. Let's read that. Electriclastmile.com. The CEO, James Taylor, uh, has been promoting the company, uh, the electric vehicle startup. So let's read that. You could see here in the website, Electric Last Mile Delivery Solutions. Let me play this for you. Okay. Uh, no sounds. Okay. No worries. Let's actually there's a lot of sounds in other uh, in other ways, but definitely I'll just read it for you. Elms is electric last mile solutions. We're creating a new world of EV possibilities for our customers. We are a new U.S. electric vehicle company transforming commercial delivery networks for e-mobility businesses of today and tomorrow. Our tech is designed to deliver the most reliable 
most efficient electric glass mount solution combining integrated deep data analytics, customization, and system sustainable engineering. Designed to be the most reliable, most efficient electric glass mount solution, lower cost of the vehicle. Let me see if you can hear. The customers that we've talked to, their number one criteria is total cost of ownership. The unique position that we'll be in the market is we will have the lowest total cost of ownership. The reason, first, the price of our vehicle, and then as an ongoing cost, the cost to operate that vehicle every day in service. And what's proven is electric vehicles have much lower maintenance. Of course, no gas, so no oils, no oil changes, no fluid changes. So consequently, the day-to-day -day running cost is 50% of a conventional gas vehicle. I would make the argument that urban delivery vehicles are probably the best application for EV technology. Just given the start stop, given the use, the vehicle itself will really require a lot less than an internal combustion motor as far as regularly scheduled maintenance. There's really, there's really not a whole lot that they have to worry about as far as keeping that vehicle in operation. So guys, if, if, um, if you think that this will compete with Lion Electric, NGA, if it's gonna compete with Workhorse, WKHS, in a way, the answer is yes. Of course, they are all competition. But the difference is that you're seeing a company at $13, way below the market caps of Workhorse, way below the market caps of Lion Electric and GA, which is now trading at $33. So we're talking about companies that indeed, in my view, are in the same category. But uh, at the end of the day, think about it. If there will be more trucks, more e-commerce, more last mile delivery, wouldn't you want to invest in a last mile delivery solution? Probably watch and check uh, ELMS. Uh, today, the ticker symbol is FIII, F3. So the sponsors were the same people from the forum merger group who actually gave us FMCI, which turned out to be Tattooed Chef. Now, there's more comments and more stories to discuss, but uh, I'll take a look first on your commentary before giving you more news. Hi, Miss Nikki. The solo have a good fan base. I am more aware, really, of RC Moto. So if you're going to ask me, RC Moto versus Solo, FUV is the one to have. I have FUV, and in fact, this drop at about 15, all the way to about 13, I'll be happy to get it. So if you don't have RC Moto, we've been buying here at about 5 to 7, added some more at about $13.50, and any drops below that. I'd say that RC Moto is the better vehicle uh, in terms of like... um. The gig economy, the delivery for, for the ones who really want a low cost, right? Um, and then for solo, the thing about this is that this is in a different country, right? So this is in Canada, tamaba. Let me just see a uh, solo vehicle, Electra Mechanica. So the solo is from Canada. Solo vehicle is um Electra Mechanica, it's a single passenger all electric vehicle with top speeds of 80 miles per hour the car is slightly more than 10 feet long 57 inches wide front wheels considerably smaller than a typical passenger vehicle so is the country ready for a single passenger vehicle um i'd say that there are people who are really interested with solo that's why it's considered it's talk that's why it's it, the name is solo right so it's for the solo person Prices are starting at $18,500. You know, that isn't so cheap. Why? Because I have some ideas that are less than $10,000 car, $5,000 car. If you really want um, a cheap car, I'd say that the Wooling Motors, aka 305HK, might actually be the better bet. This is just $4,000. This sells very well in China. When it comes to low cost, I think that China is very good when it comes to low cost. This is $2.50 right now in Hong Kong. I would prefer Wooling Motors, and in this in the same vein, this is why I'm very bullish on General Motors. We have been bullish actually since July in General Motors at about 25, 26. That was an awesome 10x coverage. But even today at about fifty dollars double, we think that even if even after a one hundred percent run. This is way undervalued versus all the electric vehicles that's going to be sold in the next 5 to 10 years. And similarly, let me just discuss a few things. Somebody asked me uh, last night about Siemens Gamesa. 
So I was discussing some companies like Renewable Energy, and uh, she shared to me, Nikki, what do you think about Siemens Gamesa? It's currently at $34. I like it. I said that electric and all these uh, solar power and wind power are a buy on, uh, on, on the in Awesome 10X. So I'm just giving you a chart pattern here. It has rallied already from 11 to $38. There has been extension there. Try to get your best entry price at about $31, $32 if you can. Hopefully, there will be some consolidation back to this um, area. Why did it go up and why did it go down in the first place? You could actually see that the world is heavily um, undervaluing a lot of wind-related turbines. Wind turbines, wind, um, and the biggest, of course, is our Vestas. Let me share with you these great companies. Simon's Gamesa Renewable Energy rallying from about 10 to 38. Is this an awesome 10x pick? The answer is yes. Um, free class, uh, I gave you a free idea, but this is actually a covered class deep dived within awesome 10x, these wind-related sectors. Now, of course, Vestas is, you cannot spell the wind without Vestas wind systems. And here, same thing, Vestas 500 rose to about 1.6 triple your money but this is not yet over i think that these are the companies that you want to actually have in your awesome 10 x portfolios drop to about 1258 get into vestas get into simon's gamesa so um we typically buy through um What's this? I typically buy through interactive brokers, but some of the clients said, Nikki, why don't you buy uh, something inside eToro? So I told them, okay, let me like uh, help you guys out. Just wanted to share to everyone that I'm willing for you guys to copy me willingly in eToro. As you could see, I just opened my account recently in eToro, as in I just opened it, I think, two days ago. So I bought actually Beyond Meat, as I told you last week. I was talking about the breakfast wraps. I talked about Zoom Video, the $340 share offering. So I got into Beyond Meat, Zoom Video, General Motors, Douyu, which is my esports analysis pick, Facebook at $250 all the way to $200 I'll be willing to buy. Palantir all the way to $20. Yes, I'll be willing to buy. Electromechanica, people ask me about it. I said, okay, I'll get in a few shares. Try, try to get in because it's similar to the last mile delivery solutions. Now, Netflix, in my view, I will, I'll be willing to buy because tonight, guys, is the Netflix earnings report. Now, in earnings, you can go 500% joke. In earnings time, it can go 5% up or 5% down. I don't care because I think that even if Netflix um, goes down tonight, I'll be happy to buy it even more at about $450. This is me, Etoro, Nikki Yu. Um, I don't know how you copy. I'm actually, uh, I'm not too familiar but uh, I also have put some pending orders. So I just started to open it, $1,000, and then easy to open. So $4,000 I already added. I'm looking to buy some Netflix if it falls below 500. I got some bids here. I'm looking to buy some ammo, which is a Teladoc, um, Teladoc related play. Actually, let me ask if this has Teladoc, by the way. I'm uh, Ah, good. I'm happy they have Teladoc. Yeah, so I'll be willing to buy Teladoc, which is the tele uh, telehealth play. Let me see if I can get it at $210, around $100. Let me see. Let me try their leverage here. Set order. Okay. So, um, all right. So, Teladoc, Amwell. SGRE is Simon's Gamesa, Vestas, yeah, I'll be willing to buy at 1250 and 31 all the way down 20% if they can go down. So these are orders uh, that I've posted for my eToro. I've got some interactive brokers account, of course, but um, I don't know if I should share my entire interactive brokers openly to everyone. But you would know it. Uh, actually, we share a lot inside interactive brokers, um, the IBKR tutorials. And if you're entering, and if, if this is your first time, do check um, testimonials and uh, check our profile page. It's in um, my profile page on Twitter is Faceless Trader. So just search Faceless Trader. Let me show that to you. Faceless, uh, sorry, Twitter. Just go to Twitter, twitter.com. So there, uh, my profile page is this. 
there. So, yep, I, I am of the view that I like a CD project. So this is a very good um, honest apology from Martin Wyszynski. Let me just show you and let's watch it. I've watched it already, but I just want you to know the first two minutes. The best games in the world, it became our mission and something that guided us up until now. Based on that legacy of genuine and honest communication, you've trusted us and pre-ordered our game. And despite good reviews on PC, the console version of Cyberpunk 2077 did not meet the quality standard we wanted it to meet. I and the entire leadership team are deeply sorry for this, and this video is me publicly owning up to that. Please, don't fault any of our teams for what happened. They all are incredibly talented and hardworking. Myself and the board are the final decision makers, and it was our call to release the game. Although, believe me, we never ever intended for anything like this to happen. I assure you that we'll do our best to regain your trust. Now I'd like to tell you how the situation looked like from the inside. Cyberpunk 2077 is huge in scope. And I'm not only talking about quests or things you see at first glance. I'm talking about a multitude of custom objects, interacting systems and mechanics. In the game, everything is not stretched out over flat terrain where we can make things less taxing hardware-wise, but condensed in one big city and in a relatively loading-free environment. On its own, this is a challenge, but we made it even more difficult for ourselves by wanting to make the game look epic on PCs and then adjusting it to consoles, especially old gens. That was our core assumption, and things did not look super difficult at first. We knew the hardware gap, yes, but ultimately, I think that time has proven that uh, we've underestimated the task. To give a concrete example and the main culprit, we had to constantly improve our in-game streaming system for all-gen consoles. Streaming is responsible for feeding the engine with what you see on screen. So I just stopped it because it's a five-minute video, but you could see that CD Projekt today at about $250 is actually one of the best ways to put some of your money in. Uh, CD Projekt is the owner of cyberpunk 2077 the witcher series and so forth as you can see from 460 dollar we're talking about polish zloty here uh this is in warsaw poland from 460 it has it has gone down back to its march lows of about 240 250 dollars if you are saying to yourself you want a real great awesome tenex company cd project is there for you at about 253 that's one company that you want to actually want um how and where to get legit information about current events and news for the global market and how to interpret it for newbie here. News and events, it's everywhere. You can watch, you can read Bloomberg, or in my case, uh, if you're asking me how I uncover most of my news, um, I, I, how do I know everything? CNBC, I, I read a lot on SPACs. I am, I'm more of a focused person. What, that, what I'm saying is that if I want to learn about SPACs, I read everything about SPACs. So you can actually read a lot of Twitter channels. You can actually read news per se. You can find it out and read it for yourself. So um, in terms of news events, um, I didn't need to read news. I just needed to go straight to the Vestas website to understand the Columbia contracts. Usually the best companies in class would share it in their social media channels and in their blogs. So in terms of like news, maybe you can go CNBC, Bloomberg. Those are like the typical Wall Street Journal. Um, but yeah, I don't even pay for any of these. You just uh, watch them, read them, or just really go to Awesome 10X, um, wherein we kind of simplify it for everybody. I try to find the best news headlines. Um, that this uh, that I'm reading all throughout. So um, I have a watch list. So um, whatever I've been I've, I'm watching, whether it be video gaming, um, I'm I'm a reader of specific trends. Actually, I didn't share to you a lot of news, but um, Microsoft Game Pass is actually doing so well. Um, they've got 20 million loyal subscribers so far, and uh, they actually did the best when it comes to subscription. I think actually when you think about news, you shouldn't. The question is, do you know what you own? Example, if I want to own Teladoc and Amwell, does Nikki you know anything about telemedicine industry? Because I need to buy it and hold it for a decade. Not like tomorrow I buy it and sell it, right? It's not the that thing. 
given that, of course, I need to know what Teladoc has done for the last three years, what Teladoc done, has done in the last year, for, especially during COVID pandemic. And now you can understand that in terms of like news, I know about Deliveroo IPO. Deliveroo, which is um, bought by Amazon about two years ago, uh, 2019. Uh, they're going to list it at about $10 billion valuation, I think, 7 to $10 billion. I'm an out of that. I mean, I, somebody asked me about it, um, and then I said uh, delivery was too expensive for my taste. But in terms of like food delivery, that secular trend, I'm willing to buy um, other delivery companies. That's why I'll tell you, uh, tell you what. We featured Dada Nexus. Dada Nexus was a free Friday class pick. You can just go to Awesome 10X, learn more about Dada. Dada works with JD, JD.com, JD Taut, yeah? Now, if you're aware of Chinese companies like that, it would be obvious to you that you are aware of Meituan Tianping, which is the Tencent, the Tencent counterpart for that. Now, for Alibaba, if you're asking me what are those express delivery companies, the answer is, of course, ZTO. Now, if you're asking me why do I know so many things, it's because I love what I do. It's one of the reasons why you want to join Inner Circle because you can see for yourself I'm a 996, perhaps not even a 996. For those who don't know what the 996 is, it's a person who works 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week, and um, you do it because you love it. And um, there, it's kind of like that. Sometimes you'll see me talk about things 6 a.m. or 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Frankly, I don't really care. Inside the inner circle, you get into my Viber feeds, you get my stream of consciousness, Inside the inner circle, you go into our Slack, you see the video gaming topics, the clean energy topics, the secular trends on e-commerce. From there, you can interpret and all the newbies, I'd say, are interested and encouraged because I make it so simple. Can you copy me? Can you just copy? Like example, if we said, oh, you could buy CD Projekt at 250, uh, yeah, you could. Amwell, you can buy 28 to 25. Teladoc, you can buy 210 to 200. Are these things given to you? Simons Gamesa, Vestas Wind Systems, yes. So it is a must for the people who are serious in investing globally to watch the live stream market updates and go to our Zoom classes, which is just available for you, 15,800 pesos a year. Let me show you what the perks are. You go to Awesome 10X. Go to the class. You can log in through your website. You can actually use your mobile phone as well. You've got a newbie training. You've got an inner circle. You've got a cheat sheet daily. The daily summary is a cheat sheet. In other words, if you just want to copy, like school, you want to cheat, the homework is done for you by Nikki Yu, it's done. You just copy. And um, all right, ACB and Tilray, what do you think? We have it. We think that the people who have it should take some profits off, but hold on to it. So if you're not um, if you're not 100 to 200 percent profitable yet on Aurora Cannabis and Tilray, number one, you're not an awesome 10x investor. You're not awesome 10x um, subscriber. And that sucks because we gave ACB as early as about $6. I think ACB, no, sorry, even at $4. Um, Aurora Cannabis right now is trading something in the realm of $13, if I'm not mistaken. And Tilray is trading at about $20. So there, we got in at 4 6 the highest maybe 8 Now it's about 12 13 take profits. It can go 18 but you want to be selling on the way up. For Tilray, I would I would assume you got in about six, seven, eight. That would be where we were buying. Some some of us were even buying at five sixty. Nineteen twenty is a place where you actually want to unload, trim some profits. Hi, Michael. He's from Jamaica. Thank you. Nice. I will copy trade Nikki you. Yeah, make some money. Um, if you actually know. All of our free Friday classes have been 100 to 200% profitable. If you don't know that, um, just go to Awesome 10X, take note that of all our company picks. Every Friday, we are giving our free classes. We give, a, we give it as a charity, free time for you so that you learn. But of course, if you want to like join, there's also a lot of ways for you to join. Just go to Awesome 10X because we are of the belief that everyone has to do investing globally. Okay, so um, wait up. Take a long. Um, what are your thoughts on Observa? Obseva, Miss Nikki. What is that? I don't know about it. Sorry. Let's see. Observa. 
what is this company? Nature meets nurture. It's in NASDAQ, $4. It's in Switzerland. It's answering the critical unmet need, taking extraordinary minds. Okay, it's a biopharma. All right, I'll tell you what. Biotech is not my expertise. Therefore, it's very rare that you'll hear about me talking about biotech. Each person has their core competency. This happens to be not mine. And so I don't know anything about this. Obseva, nature meets nurture. For too long, women have been overlooked and over and undervalued. Company corporate presentation. I'll put it in my watch list, uh, OBSV. Let me see. Um, Obseva, I don't know about it at all. So I have no idea. It's a $200 million company. Up 60% last night, very strong move, $2 to $4. Why did it go up 60% last night? Let's take a look at the news. Invis.com. Yeah, so actually what I do, guys, is I might observe a company and then read up on it. So that's really how I do it. Or I study a secular trend and look at it. So this has rallied 200% already from 2 to 4 Um Sorry, yeah, two to four, double ceiling up, yeah? Um, biotech in Switzerland, and then what does it do? Seven things you need to know before investing in this penny stock. So it's a, uh, they appointed David Rina, CFO. They confirmed sustained efficacy and continued safety of Linza Golix, whatever that means. European medicines, let me see. Uh, okay, uh, Obseva is soaring higher, higher despite there not being any noteworthy news today. Um, they're experiencing heavy trading. Uh, what exactly does this do? The update tells you that news of a canceled trial that wouldn't even please investors. It's a clinical stage focused on women's productive health. Company was founded eight years ago. It has a lead candidate on Linza Golix, managing pain with endometriosis. Um I think like it's a penny stock. It just got pumped. Um, I have no idea. Um, and so it's just a biopharma company developing, commercializing novel therapies, updates on its ESLT program, application for approval with European Med uh, Medicines Agency. Um, you know, sometimes, guys, the questions that you ask can be done through a simple Google search. So there, I think it's, it's a simple answer for you. All right. Um you still follow ARK Invest picks? Um, I'm not a big follower, but uh, it just so happens that sometimes I have a company that they like and I like together. So it's a good thing. Like, um, is Awesome 10X equivalent to ARK Invest picks? No, it's an original pick, original ideas. But is ARK Invest great? Sure. Like, um, Roku, Tesla, Square, we have that too. They've got a lot of CRISPR, Cas9. Um, I'm not a big, you know, it's not It's not that I don't understand. Sometimes because when I don't understand this genetic sequencing, this genome sequencing, even if I watched it in Netflix or, um, you know, all, all of these technologies like Editas, Invite, Intalia, Illumina, um, CRISPR, you know, um, I know about them, but do I have them? Some of us have because they don't really care whether they know it or not. But um, to me, your portfolio has to be an expression of what you believe in. Because when I buy, I buy it to keep it. I don't just buy it to sell it tomorrow just because it's up 50% tomorrow. So with that, um, you have to understand that the Awesome 10X philosophy chooses secular trends. We look for winners, and in any dips, we actually would be happy to get in. So if, you know, if, if, if for instance, let's say Arsimoto, we got in at 6, right? Now it's about 18. We could trim some at 17, 18, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to sell it all. Like uh, That means that if it goes to 10, 11, 12, I'll be happy to get back in. Similarly, you see a lot of clean energy names. I'm a big believer of Sun Power, Sun Run, and face solar edge but you've seen it go up that's why i said pigs get slaughtered at some point in time you also have to trim now winners can continue to win but has it gone 500 percent over uh overvalued in such a short span of time sometimes you think about it if it is too high you might actually try to trim and then it doesn't mean that it will fall because sometimes you trim and then it goes higher that has happened continually as well but always ask yourself um if you don't have it, example, if I don't have Roku, would I buy Roku at $400 even if I know that it is the connected TV leader? 
sometimes, you know, I tell myself, uh, you know, it's equally it's equally likely for Roku to go 300 as well as 500. With a 50-50 batting average, I wouldn't. Like, I can hold my Roku, but it doesn't mean that I'll buy it at $400. So, yun. Um, a lot of people follow ARK Invest. Um, and I think, like, some of our members do. Uh, for instance, Maxar and Raven um, is, a, is an ARK Invest idea. I didn't get it from there. Uh, it just so happened that I was looking at the ARC Space Fund. And actually, I'm sorry, no, sorry. There's no such thing as me knowing what the ARC Space Fund is. But there are speculations, of course, on what would be inside ARC Space Fund. Therefore, uh, me, of course, I said, oh, if it's a space fund, it has to have some space infrastructure uh, related place. So definitely there would be an SPCE. Perhaps there will be an NPA. There will be a Momentus, which is SRAC. Perhaps they're going to be MaxR. At the end of the day, what what they choose will be their choice. Uh, but if you're going to ask me if Awesome 10X was supposed to make an Awesome 10X space fund, it would be there. Like if 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 you if Awesome 10X had a space fund, space play, it would have some, it would have these uh, entities like what I told you a while ago, which is Gilat, which is helping 5G solutions uh, with satellite networks uh, out, out outer space. So those things, all right? So um, do you do options at IB? I have some warrants. I haven't done call options yet, but um, some of us do. So a lot of us actually have call options. Let's say I let's say I like Zoom, Zoom video. So we bought I bought stock of Zoom, but some people have calls on Zoom video. Or let's say we've been investing in Sunrun. Some of us might have Sunrun call options rather than Sunrun stock. So end of the day, um, Yatsen, Xpeng, yeah, I have them for long term. Is Xpeng and Yatsen uh dropping thirteen percent, five percent, holding it? Thanks. Um, look for me. Chinese companies like Xpeng and Yatsen, think about it. A lot of these clientele are also uh, traders. Chinese companies are the most traded. It's not always held. So what I do is I have some Yatsen at 20, uh, sorry, I, I have it at about $17.50. I bought some more at $15, $16. I sold some at 20, but I'm willing to hold all the way, whether it goes to 15, back to 15, or goes all the way to about $25 or $30. Long term, I like Yatsen, aka Perfect Diary. Xpeng, I also like it long term. Uh, we have coverage in both of these names. Um, I would hold on to it. Any drops? Um, so this is what I do. Typically, for Chinese companies per se, uh, whether it be Dada Nexus, JD, Pinto Ato, all of them Chinese, right? Um, I always trade a portion of Chinese names. Precisely because my experience with Chinese names is that they get traded. They get traded, meaning if you make 30, 40% easily, which happened to Xpeng, you know, I know 36 went to 54. What is that? A 50% move in just five days. Or I think it was like a week, right? Let me show it to you the chart. Um, Xpeng, Xpeng, we bought at about below 40 when it fell, right? Because, um, Xpeng had a $45 offering, share offering here. You see, 38 all the way to 54 in just a less than a week, right? Or was it like two weeks? So when it was falling at about 52, I trimmed some. Uh, I trimmed a little, very, very small. So here you got in a 36 within what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, like less than 10 days, right? It went about 54. I think eventually Xpeng will go to about $70. So at the level of 47, even if it falls back to about 40 or 30, 5, 30, actually, I don't even think it will go below 40, guys. So um, probability-wise, I think Xpeng, every drop below 45 is a buy. You'd see that we have been buying as early as about 18 to 20, added more 31. I sold some at 70 and 63, bought back in at 48 all the way to 40. And uh, so, so yeah, I, I held on. Plus, I held on to these. Yep. I, I would hold. Like, uh, I'm, I'm a believer of Xpeng. Xpeng Motors, uh, General Motors, all of these electric vehicle solutions. All right. It's been long. Uh, it's a 43 minute already. Thank you very much. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing. Please don't forget to join our inner circle. We have a 15,800 pesos annual fee. It's 21% 20, discount for anyone who subscribes before Chinese New Year, which is February 12, 2021. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.